Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kat, and I talk about mostly books here, sometimes about my life in Japan. So welcome to my channel if you are new here. Today I'm going to be doing the end of the year book tag. Let's go ahead and get on into it. Okay, so the first question is, are there any books that you have started this year that you need to finish? Actually, I'm really good about either finishing a book or DNFing it. There are two books that I'm currently reading, which I will definitely finish by the end of the year. One is Ruby by Cynthia Bond. This book is written in a really evocative manner and it deals with magical surrealism and racial elements in the South and I feel like the way that Bond writes is quite similar to Marquez only her take on women is much better so I have some problems with Marquez and the way he views women I'm not gonna get into it side tangent but I really really like Ruby I expect that this will be a four or a four and a half star for me and I'm currently exactly halfway because I was just talking about the halfway mark with a buddy read of mine. The other book I'm currently going through is The Vore by Brian Catling. And I'm reading this with James from James Chatham. I am about maybe 80% of the way through. And this is quite a saga wherein there is no real discernible plot. And you're not even sure if all the characters are necessary. But... I really am enjoying the journey of it. I got into this book for the summary on the back and the storyline, which I thought would be just an amazing adventure. But what I have stuck around for is his great vocabulary. He has a huge vocabulary that he is just like choosing words from. And second, and probably most importantly, his imagination. I think that some of the things in this book are just so wildly fantastic that I... And just like, wow. Oh my god. Like, wow. Like, and he'll just throw in elements, like, not even as main events or like main parts. It's just like a little side part that happens, and I'm still thinking about it. And I'm like, ooh. Like, it's creepy, but it's also really good. It, like, I want to forget about it, but it also is really making me think about different things. I thought this book would be really quick to get through. It's kind of a slog, which is why I haven't finished it yet. I am gonna finish it this month. I started last month, so it's kind of a holdover. But yes, I believe I will finish it this month. We're going, we're going, we're going. So question number two is if I have any autumnal books to transition me into the end of the year. And the way that I'm gonna view that question is a book that deals with the changing of the seasons or about greenery that would kind of move me towards, you know, like the death of all things, which is, you know, winter. Um, that's how I feel about winter. It's the death of everything. It's the death of all warmth. And I, mean, I think I'm just bitter because we don't have central heating in Japan. So I'm in our tatami room and I'm freezing my keister off right now. I actually picked up John Muir's Travels in Alaska for last month. And also it is great for nonfiction November. And the way that he writes about um, traveling in Alaska is really beautiful and he's just in love with nature. He was one of the first people to catalog his adventures um, in California and up the western coast to Alaska and I read the first few chapters and it is just beautiful. Um, I think I just put it down because um, other books caught my fancy more but I do believe that it would be a really great segue into the cold of winter because he actually does segue from California up into Alaska and I don't know a better <laughs> transition than warm California frigid wasteland Alaska it's not a frigid wasteland the whole year but in the winter it definitely is so yeah I'm gonna go with travels in Alaska by John Muir question number three is is there any release that you are still waiting for and I'm actually going to change this question because there are new releases and I am literally still waiting for them because they have come out. I asked for them for my birthday, which is in November. Um, my mom bought me three books, which I have been dying to get my hands on, but the box is lost like somewhere between America and Japan. I don't know. Maybe it fell in the ocean. I hope not. But um, it's been quite a few weeks now. But the three books that I'm really, really anticipating reading and I really, 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 really can't wait to get my hands on. Um, number one is Beast Made of Night by Tochi Anyabuchi, and this book deals with uh, kind of magician or sorcerers who can take the sin of people, which manifests themselves as beasts, and they can consume them, and then that beast is put as a tattoo upon their own body. I have just been in love with like that plot idea since I first heard about it, and I have been anxiously anticipating the October 31st publication date, and I just can't wait to get my hands on that book. 
Um, book number two is The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night by Jen Campbell. It's a series of short stories. I cannot wait to read it. I've heard great things, including a story about, I believe, a man who buys a woman's heart online, and I just love Jen Campbell overall, so I'm really excited to get my hands on that. And the last one is Autonomous by Annalie Newitz, which deals with a pharmaceutical pirate named Jack. A woman named Jack, so I'm, I'm already very, very excited. And then she basically steals drugs and gives them to the poor, only this drug causes people to work compulsively, like fall in love with their work and continue to work. And chasing Jack is a duo, a policeman and a paladin, which is like a robot, who are in love against like all the odds. So there are like so many clickbaity things in that title that just like speak to me, and I cannot wait to read this book. I have been steering myself away from the reviews because I don't want to know. Like, if people didn't like it, I fully intend to read it anyway. <laughs> so yeah, those are the books that I have been really anticipating and I really want to get my hands on. Like, as soon as they come in the mail, I'm just gonna, I wish I had three brains like to read them at the same time. But yeah, I'm super excited. So excited. So question number four is name three books that you want to read by the end of the year. I'm not going to just repeat the three that I just said because those, yes, I really, really want to read them by the end of the year. So I'm going to say three that I currently have in my room, which I think will be amazing. So there is The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier. And this book is a retelling of Arabian Nights or A Thousand and One Arabian Nights. It deals with a woman whose friend is killed by the Caliph. Um, because she does not satisfy him and is killed the next morning. So to get revenge for her friend, she decides to try out and be his wife and then assassinate him no matter what during the night. So I think I've heard great things about this book. I couldn't wait to pick it up and I cannot wait to read it. And I don't know just why I haven't just, it was like October and Halloween and then it was nonfiction and this is not nonfiction, but ah, just no time. Yeah, so really looking forward to it. Another book that I think will be amazing is Fourth of July Creek by Smith Henderson. So I'm really getting my absolute darling vibes from this and it deals with a social worker who stumbles upon an almost feral boy. And the father is very much involved in end of times and a doomsday type mindset and it's a very dangerous and precarious situation for the social worker to be in to help save the little boy. And also, like, the quarter shot on the front really reminds me of My Absolute Darling. Like My Absolute Darling, this book also deals with the wilderness, although it's of Montana, not California, and it deals with a disturbed father, and it has to do with a at-risk youth. So I think that this will be a really powerful read and I really hope I get to it by the end of the year. And the last book which I really want to get to is Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert E. Heinlein. This is considered a sci-fi classic, um, almost like a cult classic I believe, and I have read a lot of Orwell and a lot of Bradbury. I love it. I love classic sci-fi and I have been meaning to read this forever. And I don't really know much other than a man comes from Mars and teaches things to people on Earth and it just became like sensational and I've heard really great things about it and I cannot wait to get into it. Um, if any of you guys have read this, let me know what you thought. How does it hold up against like Bradbury and Orwell? Um, I'd really love to know what you think. And I also really love the cover. Um, I really do hope that Mars is like a water world or Earth is a water world. That would be a uh, hella dope. So question number five is, is there a book which you think could shock you and still become your favorite? And for that, I'm gonna go ahead and say that out of the six books that I just named right now that I really, really want to read, three of them have really strong potential because I believe that they are similar to other books. So Autonomous has a bunch of elements which, if done correctly, could be my absolute favorite. Like a very strong female character named Jack who is a pirate, like that's a huge one, and then like a forbidden love, and the love isn't even between two humans, it's between like a robot and a human, like there's just so many things happening, and it sounds like if Margaret Atwood and Cinesalo had an Orwell, like had a love child, that this would be that book. And if that is that book, if it is written that well, and it does those themes in an amazing way, oh my god, it will be so amazing. Um, another one that I really high hoped for is Stranger in a Strange Land because I just love classic sci-fi. A lot of people compare it to Bradbury and Bradbury has written some of my favorite fiction I have ever read in my whole life. If it is anything like Bradbury, I think it could become one of my insta-faves. And of course, there is 
um, 4th of July Creek. Sounds like my absolute darling, which I absolutely loved. It is just like mind-blowingly good. It is so amazing. I can't believe it's his first book. I'm not even over it. I read it a while ago and I'm not over it. My absolute darling, if you haven't read it, I will leave the link to my full review down below. You should definitely read it. 10 out of 10 recommend. And if this is anything like that, it could be a new favorite. And the last question is about my reading plans for 2018. Um, so I haven't made plans per se, like I haven't planned out a month, but there are two releases that are new um, that I have my eye on and I will definitely be getting. Uh, one is Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I'm a big Holly Black fan. She does sinister dark fairies like no other and I love her for it. And Cruel Prince deals with a girl whose family is murdered in her youth and she and her sisters go to the High Fae Court where basically she is trying to get revenge, I believe, on the um, High Court family, especially the Cruel Prince who is the cruelest of them all. I've heard some people say, isn't this just like any other High Fae Court book? And then the other commenters who have actually read the book are like, you better check yourself because it is Holly Black and no one writes sinister fairies like Holly Black. So I'm really looking forward to that. I believe it comes out in January. Yeah, I believe it comes out in January. And the other one I'm really looking forward to is Fence, a comic teamed up, I believe, between C.S. Pacat, who wrote the Captive Prince trilogy, which I love, and Joanna the Mad, who is the illustrator. So it is currently out. You can buy it right now. The reason I haven't is because I'm waiting a little bit to hear some reviews because the only major critique I have of the Captive Prince trilogy is that it is extremely male-centric and it is something that Paquette has also said that she has taken note of and would try to incorporate more in her further stories and I understand that kind of the area where she writes the best is about queer male-male relationships and I'm really into it like really really into it but that doesn't mean I don't want female characters I also need female characters so when I first heard about Fence I looked up like everything there is like who's paired with who who the boys are all the illustration like what they wear what their hobbies are what their favorite food is like you know all that kind of all that kind of stuff um and there are no women characters listed so that is a bit troubling and I'm waiting to hear how other people think of it. Right now on Goodreads, because it has just come out, a lot of the reviews are just absolutely glowing. Obviously, the drawing style is just beautiful. They are some handsome babies. It's not that it's not gorgeous, it's just that I need some female characters in my life. I'm just waiting to hear what people think of it after some time has passed, but I'm overall extremely excited. So, welcome to the end of my end of the year book tag. If you guys have anything to chat to me about, I would love to see it down in the comments. Um, if you liked this video, then please give me a thumbs up or hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And I just hope that everyone is really getting into the end of the year reading spirit. I don't know about you guys, but I really try to read as much as I can. I feel like as soon as NaNoWriMo is over, then it's just going to be like the gates have lifted and I'm off to the races. Like, I feel like December is going to be like the annihilation of all the books in my room, um, which is, you know, a complete pipe dream because my wedding is January 6th. So that's just insane. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, um, insanity or not. So I will go ahead and chat to you guys later in the comments. And yeah, toodles for now. Bye. <laughs>